All right, today, guys, we are going to be looking at the administrative functions of a Toshiba eStudio machine. And this works with just about the entire line of eStudio. You may have some options that are not present in your machine if it's a black and white or if it's a newer model, uh, so on and so forth. But the general gist is the same, so let's jump right into it. Copy or copying, take three. First thing we're gonna do is hit user functions. And before I go any further, I should actually tell you guys that as we go through this, Toshiba put in a very short window of opportunity to actually type in your commands. So it might boot us back out to the main screen and you'll see me go into the administrative functions again really quick. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, they just put that very short window in. But getting back to it, we're going to hit the user functions button and this is going to be the user tab of the user functions. You can see down here at the bottom we also have an administrative tab. When we hit that, it's going to ask us for a password. Now this password, the generic password is 123456 and most likely that will work on your machine. Unless you happen to have a machine that just came out of a large office that may have had a I don't know, an office geek that put a different password in. I can show you how to uh, reset that later, but for the most part, most of you should be able to get into this screen now, the administrative tab, just, with, just by hitting one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the first thing I like to do when I get a machine is I like to reset it to factory defaults. And to get there, we're just gonna page down. And it's the only option on the second page. You hit factory default, and it's gonna ask you if you wanna, uh, or, or are you sure? And it's letting you know that all settings and all initialized data will be cleared. I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, as you can see, it says the process was finished successfully. And when we hit okay, it's gonna uh, power down the machine, reboot it. And that first initial boot may take a little while, uh, or a little more time than uh, usual. Uh, one other thing I should mention on this process, occasionally, very, very rarely, it'll say process failed. Um, I don't know why it does that, it, it, but it does happen on occasion. One way you can get around that is to just format the hard drive on the machine and then just do a fresh install of the software. A lot of people don't have that software. You can call me. Uh, I'll be happy to give it to you. Or call your local technician. That's fine, too. So. I'm going to hit OK, we're going to get this rebooted, and we'll start again. All right, we're back, and that boot did take a little bit longer than normal, only about 45 to 60 seconds longer than normal. And so let's get right back into it. We are going to go into the user functions. We're going to go to admin, hit the password. Again, it is 123456, hit OK. And the very first thing I do is I go to the energy saver mode because for some reason, and that's under general and then energy saver, the auto power save, the default is one minute. So if you uh, reboot it and then you boot it back up, walk away, chances are you're gonna come back and it's already gonna be shut down again. So I'm gonna change that to 60 minutes and then I'm gonna go into sleep and super sleep. Again, they set it at one minute, which is really strange to me. I don't know why they do that. And then I'm gonna change that to 120 minutes because that's pretty typical. Most of my clients like 60 minutes on the, on the uh, sleep mode, I'm sorry, on the uh, auto power save and then 120 minutes on the sleep mode. And then it also has this option over here for super sleep. I like to disable that. The reason I do that is because I have had a client or two tell me that when that is enabled and it is in that super sleep mode, occasionally, it doesn't like to wake up. So I just disable it because the power savings that you're getting from just the regular sleep mode is plenty fine. So I'm gonna hit okay and then I'm gonna hit return and we are gonna go one more time back to return and this is your main page. Now we have a little uh, breathing room to look at some of these other options. But I am gonna go back into general uh, device information is pretty self-explanatory. You can set your location, the service phone number, contact information, that sort of thing. I like to leave that blank. Most of my machines are going across country, so I am not the service technician or the main point of contact, typically. So I leave that blank for them to fill in. 
Uh, notification, in case anything were to go wrong with the machine on an internal computer basis, you can set this up to email a technician or anybody on your staff to say, hey, there's, a, there's an issue or an error message that's happening. Uh, password setup, you can uh, change the admin password or the service password. I don't recommend doing anything with these, but if you are a large corporation where a lot of people are going to be using these copiers and you don't want other people to be messing with it, go ahead and change it. Clock, you can set up the date and time or the date format, pretty self-explanatory as well. Energy saver, we just went through. Display level, uh, the calibration and registration. Okay, so if we go back a page here, you can see that the calibration and the registration buttons are right here. They're in the admin tab. But if we change the display level to user, which I like to do, and hit OK, those buttons go away, and now they're back over here on the user in general. And there they are. Okay, so that's up to you. I like to uh, allow the end user to be able to calibrate it in case they go and do a copy or a print and they notice that something's kind of funky, then they can do a quick calibration on it right then and there and then recopy and get a good, good end result. So once again, let's go back into the admin. General, whoops general uh, display that was display level now we're gonna go to the pop-up messages I always disable the drawer set and what that means is every time you open the drawer and you put it back in there's gonna be a pop-up message that's asking you do you have the right type of paper in there most of the time you're just refilling the drawer so you don't need that pop-up so I always disable it uh, paper misfeed recovery I always enable that that's gonna give you on-screen walkthrough instructions on how to clear a jam or, or a misfeed if that were to happen Okay, next is the status message. Toner near empty, I like to leave that on. That way when uh, the toner does get low, the machine will tell the user that, hey, there's a toner that's low, and that's a good indication that it's probably time to order more toner. And by the way, you can order from me if you want. The other one is the paper empty message, and there's just gonna be a little message down here in the lower left-hand corner of the screen that says paper empty. It doesn't tell you specifically which drawer, but you can see on the icon on the main page, we go back, you can see this bottom drawer here on my machine, it doesn't have any little blue bars there, so that's the one that's actually gonna be empty. That was status message. Now let's go to auto clear. Toshiba put it as 45 seconds on an auto clear. So what that means is if I were a user and I need to go and make copies on this machine, I'm gonna come here and say I want five copies sorted and stapled. Well, I'm gonna enter in those that information on the machine and I'm gonna make my copies and then I'm gonna walk away. Well, the machine's gonna store my settings of five copies sort and staple for 45 seconds before it clears that and goes back to the default. So. I like to set auto clear at 15 seconds to make sure that the next person who uses this machine doesn't have to manually clear my settings. Now it's still possible if somebody is waiting in line directly behind me, 15 seconds is the quickest time frame to clear those settings, so that's why I always do it. Now I understand that if you are in an office environment where you're going to be standing at this copier for a half hour just making copies of random different things and you need the same settings over and over and over again, well 15 seconds will probably still work for you, but I can understand it could be frustrating if you took 20 seconds one time and it cleared everything and you had to go back through and re-enter it. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, on what that auto clear means. Then the last thing is the license management. You know, you don't have the license information or the software information, so uh, I'm not even gonna even go through that. And then page down. Now we have languages, pretty self-explanatory. You can choose whatever language you want. System updates, let me go back here. System updates, cloning, you don't really need that. Um, that's only going to be for your service technicians and again you probably don't have access to the software or the firmware so you don't need to worry about this panel calibration pretty self-explanatory as well if you start noticing and this screen kind of is uh, i'm touching some buttons but i notice that it's not quite picking it up so i'm going to go through and i'm going to calibrate it just by hitting the crosses in each corner and hopefully that uh, makes everything a little bit better uh, export logs well, that's going to be your uh, print, send, receive, scan. Just if you ever, if you're in an office environment where you want to know if something was sent uh, or received or printed, it's going to uh, output that to a file for you. 
cancel that job skip um, I don't even I just leave that off keyboard layout you can set it to QWERTY or A30 uh, whatever you want banner message uh, the banner message when it I think this is when it boots up it's gonna give you kind of a banner message you can put your company name whatever you want on there I just leave those blank ADF noise reduction that is gonna be the automatic document feeder on the top of the machine as you scan things if it notices that there's a lot of noise on your paper a lot of specs or, or uh, debris or something uh, you can actually set this to whoops you can set that to kinda get rid of some of that noise and then the last thing is a self-check interval. So it's gonna do like an auto calibration on itself. You can set it to standard, longer, or longest, depending on what you want. I just leave it at standard. All right, so now let's hit return. And the network tab, this is where you're gonna to go to set up your copier on your network. Now I'm, gonna not, I'm not gonna go through this right now. I'm gonna save this for another video. Um, but uh, let your technician know that that's where you wanna go if he's gonna set it up. All right, the next thing is the copy. Here you can set up your maximum number of copies. You have 999 or 999. I just leave it at 999. Uh, and quite simply, that means if somebody were to put a, a job in the document feeder, the max number of copies they can make is 999 copies before they have to then put it in again and do it over. Uh, so 999, just put it at the max, keep it simple. Auto two-sided mode, I leave that off, and that's for uh, copy purposes. Um, basically, it's just gonna scan one side of the machine, or one side of the paper only. Uh, sort priority mode, I always leave that as non-sort, but if you do have a finisher on there where you're always gonna be sorting and stapling or whatever, you can set it to sort, and no matter what job you put in there, and as long as it has multiple copies, it's automatically gonna sort that. But I leave it as non-sort. Let's go to page down. Automatic change of paper source, always turn on. What that means is if you have two drawers with the same type of paper in it and one drawer runs out of paper, it'll automatically switch to the other drawer to finish the job. Paper of different direction, uh, same thing. If you have two types of paper, I'm sorry, if you have the same type of paper in there but it's in different directions, the machine will automatically rotate the image uh, to fit on the uh, paper that's going the other direction. So that's good. That's a good thing, I always leave that on. Suspend printing if stapler's empty. I usually turn that off, I don't know why. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory as well. If you had a finisher on here with a stapler and the stapler runs out of staples, it's gonna just stop the process. And the reason I turn that off is I figure I'd rather have the copies printed. I can always go back and staple it if needed. But anyway, I leave it off. Then default mode of auto color. So if you have a document in there and you chose auto color, I'm always gonna say full color, uh, but you can set it to black if you wish. Page down one more time. Auto exit tray change. Uh, I just leave this off. Waste hole punch tray full off again. That's the same thing, kind of like the stapler. If you turn that on and the waste hole punch tray is full, then it's gonna stop the process. But I leave that off. And besides, I don't have a finisher on this machine anyway, so I don't need it. Then original outside erase, um, basically it's just gonna erase the border of the copy if needed. I leave that off as well. All right, facts, I'm not gonna go into this. I would refer you to the service manual in order to set this up. Most of my clients don't use facts, although they do like the ability to do it, they don't use it very often, so I'm not gonna go through it. File is, this is when you scan to file, and this is where you're gonna set the number of maintenance days that, it's, that the machine is gonna save it. Right now it's at 30, or you can just turn it off altogether, but if you wanted to change it to say 14 days, just type 14 and hit okay. All right, email, um, most of my clients like this, and this is where you'd go to set up the uh, email information. Now there is some back-end work that you have to do with the email function as well, and that's gonna be done on your browser through top access. I'm gonna save that for another video as well, but if you do have a person that is setting up your scan to email functionality, just let them know that that's where it is. Internet facts, not gonna go through that. Security, um, not gonna go through that either. Not important for the average user. 
List report, I'm not really gonna go through either because it's not very common. Printer e-filing, again, not very common. Most of my clients like to scan to email, so we're not gonna worry about that as either. Wireless setting, you see that that's grayed out. These machines, uh, also Bluetooth settings is, is grayed out as well. These machines can have a wireless adapter where they can connect to your network or a Bluetooth device, um, but this particular machine does not. Most machines don't have that. Most machines are gonna be hooked up directly to a modem or a router, uh, so you don't have that functionality, so that's why they're grayed out. I think that is about it. We've gone through everything there. Page down, that's the factory default again if you wanted to do that. The last thing I'm going to uh, tell you about is this service button. And again, this goes back to if you have a service technician that is going to routinely be checking your machine, you can uh, the technician can set up the customer information, the service technician information. And if anything were to go wrong with this machine, the machine is going to give you those phone numbers uh, to call that person. Uh, supply order setup, you can set up toner ordering. Um, Service notifications, I always leave those off. Again, if something were to go wrong with the machine or if it runs through a set number of cycles, it's gonna pop up a message saying service required. But you can set up email notifications or you can set up fax notifications uh, to do that. But I leave everything off because I find it to be kind of annoying, to be honest with you. And then um, device information transmit, again, you can turn that off as well or you can turn it on if you're a technician. So what that's handy for is if you are under lease or under a rental agreement for these machines, these machines will automatically send the owner or the technician your click count or any other relevant information that uh, may be needed. That way the technician doesn't necessarily have to come out to the machine in order to get the information. So that is the administrative functions. Hope that helped. I know I went fast, but if you have any questions, just rewatch, give me a call, let me know what you're trying to do, and I'll be happy to help. Uh, your fax settings, again, this is something that uh, most of my clients don't actually use faxing, but this is where you would go to enter in all the information that you need. File store, this is where you're going to set the number of days that your scan to file is going to be saved on the machine. It automatically sets it at 30 days. I leave that on. You can turn that whole process off if you don't want it to ever save. Uh, you can do that as well. Email setup, this is very, very popular uh, with my clients and a lot of pop, or very popular with a lot of small offices. They don't want to save to a file where everybody has access. They want to send it directly to their email. And this is how you would do it. Um, there are additional online settings that you have to uh, set up first before this is operational, but that's where you would go in order to do that right there. Whoops. Uh, internet facts, again, most of my clients don't use this, so I'm not really going to go through this. I'm going to refer you to the uh, service manual. Security, again, not really a major issue with my clients, so I don't, I don't do a lot of stuff with that either. I just leave the default settings as is. Printer and e-filing, this is where you're going to change your paper source, paper direction, stapler, that sort of thing when you're e-filing. Um, most of my clients use the scan to email option, so this doesn't really affect anybody, so I just leave these as the default as well. And as you can see, it's been popping me out uh, quite often here. So uh, once again, back to general, back to page down. Uh, ADF noise reduction, you can set, uh, that's when you copy. If there's a lot of noise on your paper, it can kind of reduce that a little bit. Uh, both on copy and on scanning. I just leave it as none. 
typically that's not an issue. 